Hello, welcome to video lectures. I am Karna Majit Narendra Rao, Assistant Professor, Vijayanad College, Uspati. And today's topic is on orbital velocity and total energy of an electron. Now we shall understand what is an expression for orbital velocity of an electron. Consider an atom of atomic number Z of nuclear charge ZE. Let an electron of mass M and charge minus E revolves around the nucleus with an orbital velocity V. If R is the radius of the circular orbit, then according to Bohr's postulate, the necessary centripetal force is being offered by the electrostatic force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus. The electrostatic force of attraction between the electron and the nucleus is given by Z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught R square. However, the centripetal force is given by mv square by r. On equating these two expressions, we have mv square by r is equal to z d square by 4 pi epsilon naught r square. Now, on cancellation of r and interchanging the terms, mv square r is equal to z d square by 4 pi epsilon naught. From Bohr's quantization condition, the orbital angular momentum is given by mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi. Dividing equation 3 by 4, we have mv square r by mvr is equal to z d square by 4 pi epsilon naught whole divided by nh by 2 pi or v is equal to z d square by 2 epsilon naught nh which happens to be an expression for the orbital velocity and it is given by z d square by 2 epsilon naught n into h. From this expression, it is very clear that except the value of n, the remaining are all constants and however, z is equal to 1 for hydrogen atom. From this expression, it is very clear that the velocity varies inversely as n. That means, the velocity as the value of n increases, the velocity decreases. Therefore, the electron moves relatively slower in higher orbits. For the first orbit of hydrogen atom, for first orbit n is equal to 1, for hydrogen atom z is equal to 1. On substitution, we get v is equal to e square by 2 epsilon naught h, where e is the charge of the electron, epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space, h is the Planck's constant. On substitution, we get this as 2.18 into 10 raised to 6 meter per second. However, the period of revolution of the electron in the first orbit is given by t is equal to 2 pi r divided by v, where r is the radius of the first orbit of hydrogen atom and is said to be Bohr's radius and is given by 0 0.53 angstrom units or 0 0.53 into 10 raised to minus 10 meters where v is the orbital velocity and is given by 2.18 into 10 raised to 6 meter per second. On substitution of this value, we get this as 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 16 seconds. In other words, it means that whenever the electron is moving in the first orbit, it is moving with a velocity of 2.18 into 10 raised to 6 meter per second and it will take a total time period of 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 16 seconds to complete first orbit of this particular atom. Therefore, the period of revolution is 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 16 seconds and its orbital velocity is 2.18 into 10 raised to 6 meter per second. Now to obtain an expression for total energy of an electron. When we consider an atom of atomic number Z of nuclear charge ZE, when we consider an electron of mass m and charge e, which when revolves around the nucleus with certain orbital velocity v and radius of the orbit as r. As this electron is at a distance from the nucleus, it possesses potential energy and by virtue of its motion around the nucleus, it possesses kinetic energy as well. The potential energy of the electron is nothing but amount of work done. This amount of work done is nothing but force into displacement. The force is nothing but the electrostatic force of attraction between electron and the nucleus and is given by Z d square by 4 pi epsilon naught R square. And the distance is given by R. When we cancel this value of R, we get this as Z d square by 
4 pi epsilon naught r. Therefore, the potential energy is nothing but work done that is equal to minus j d square by 4 pi epsilon naught r and the kinetic energy is given by half m v square. From Bohr's postulate, m v square by r is equal to j d square by 4 pi epsilon naught r square. That is, the necessary centripetal force is being offered by the electrostatic force of attraction between electron and the nucleus. On account of cancellation of r, we have m v square is equal to j d square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r. Substituting this value of mv square in the expression of kinetic energy, we get the kinetic energy to be equal to z d square by 8 pi epsilon naught r. Then, the total energy of the electron in the nth orbit is the sum of potential and kinetic energy and is given by minus z d square by 4 pi epsilon naught r, the potential energy, and the kinetic energy is z d square by 8 pi epsilon naught r. Then on simplification we get this as minus j d square by 8 pi epsilon naught r where r is the radius of the electron's nth orbit and is given by epsilon naught n square h square by pi m j d square. On substitution of this value we get this value of the total energy as minus m z square e to the power of 4 by 8 epsilon naught square n square h square. For hydrogen atom Z is equal to 1 and the total energy of the electron in the first or nth orbit of hydrogen atom is given by minus m e to the power of 4 by 8 epsilon naught square n square h square where negative sign shows that the electron is bounded to the nucleus. Next the second important point is that the negative sign also shows that as the value of n increases what happens to this value of a n? Because of negative sign, the energy that is as n increases, the numerical value of e n also increases because of this negative sign. And the energy must be supplied to remove the electron from the field of the nucleus. Therefore, the electron in the outermost orbit possesses greatest energy than the electron in the innermost orbit. However, the energy of the electron in the nth orbit is given by E suffix n that is equal to m z square e to the power of 4 whole divided by 8 epsilon naught square n square h square. When we substitute all this value of constants except the value of z and n, we get that as minus 13.6 z square by n square electron volt. For hydrogen atom z is equal to 1 and is given by minus 13.6 by n square electron volt. Thank you.